Hi everyone, I'm David Liu and this is Andrew Zai. We're from Pinterest. And today we're going to be talking about how we've been applying computer vision at Pinterest um, to build a visual search system. So first a little introduction about what Pinterest is. We are a visual discovery tool that helps people save and discover creative ideas. So these could be things like planning a vacation or a home remodel or finding recipes for dinner. So the core element of Pinterest is the pin, which contains an image, a description that the user has provided, as well as a link back to the original object on the web. So this could be an article or a recipe or a product. Users choose to organize their pins into personally curated collections called boards. And each user picks out a different way to organize uh, their pins. So for example, the same pin might be um, on the board because someone likes the color scheme or someone else likes the furniture that's shown in that picture. We have a lot of data. There's over 50 billion of these pins organized into a billion boards. So it, it's probably not surprising that uh, this user curated graph is the source of most of our discovery experiences. For example, uh, a personalized home feed recommendations uh, for related pins, and the search. But the most salient element of a pin is still uh, the image. And that's why for the last year and a half, we've been working to apply computer vision to uh, analyze these pins. In this talk, we're going to go over um, some of the infrastructure that we've built to support computer vision, as well as some product applications. First part of the infrastructure is uh, how we extract features. So every, every image on Pinterest, we apply uh, a lot of features, uh, feature extraction methods, some of which are uh, detecting relevant objects inside those pictures. We extract local uh, image features in order to do deduplication. We pass images through a deep neural network, uh, which gives us a lot of low-level features for finding similar images as well as um, a bunch of classifiers. So the challenge that we have is that there are billions of these images and we have to keep up with um, the, the new images that are being added every day. Engineers are also continually adding and improving features. So our solution to, to these challenges is to build up a scalable pipeline which uh, computes these features continually. And we use a, a wide variety of pretty commonly available technologies uh, to create this pipeline. We have a job which um, every day looks at the pins which have been added to Pinterest and it creates a list of newly uploaded images. I don't know if I have a pointer here. Um, so it organizes these into epochs, one per day, and newly added images um, will be added into uh, one epoch for that day. And we expect to have corresponding feature files for those uh, epochs. So we have a job which then uh, scans and sees which of these epochs is missing certain features. And then we'll enqueue a job to send it off to a cluster of uh, AWS machines. And this is what does the actual feature extraction. Once those features are extracted, we can uh, send them off to client pipelines, which uh, do things like image deduplication, aggregating annotations of images. And finally, uh, we make all of this accessible as um, a random access format so that we can use it for online queries. So how does this fulfill the two use cases that I mentioned earlier? First, as new images are added, uh, new epochs are continually being created. So every day, the only jobs that need to be run are those that correspond to new images. And it's flexible, because when engineers are developing new features, this simply results in a new type of feature, and we can backfill um, those features for all of Pinterest images. All right. So now that we know how these features are generated, Andrew's going to talk about how we build an index out of these. Cool. Uh, all right, so using the features that we generated with the pipeline that David described previously, 
um, we can build a visual search uh, system out of it. Um, so just to give you guys a high-level overview of how we approach uh, visual similarity, um, what it is is that given an image, we extract uh, deep learning features from this image, and then we take this deep learning feature to do a near nearest neighbor lookup. Um, after getting some candidates from this near uh, nearest neighbor lookup, what we do then is to take the candidates and re-rank them using some sort of uh, metadata that we have about this image um, to get this final list of visually similar results. So what I've described is what actually happens um, if you were having, if you had like a one machine scenario, if all your images were able to fit on one machine. Um, but at Pinterest, uh, to scale the system up to billions of images, what we did was that we took this idea and we implemented a, a scatter gather architecture. Where given a query image, what happens is that we distribute our index into shards so that the query image, once we have it, we fan it out to different shards, and each of these shards would do this nearest neighbor re-ranking procedure, as I mentioned previously, um, on a subset of images. And then the final job of the system is to collect the results from these sh shards to get the final list of visually similar results. So this system is, um, at Pinterest, right now scales to billions of images, and we're able to get a real-time latency of, of around 200 milliseconds. And what's pretty cool about this is that we built it mostly through open source, uh, open source tools and a widely available platforms such as like Amazon EC2. Um, it took one engineer around like two months time to build this entire infrastructure. Um, so now I want to get more into the details of what happens in our visual search system. So you can imagine like given a query image, what we first do is extract the deep learning features that I mentioned before and in particular, we extract a binarized version of our deep learning feature as we need to store these features in our index as well. Um, by binarizing these features, we're able to save a ton of memory, around 32x the original, um, because originally these features are vectors of floats. Um, along with the deep learning features, we also extract, uh, well, we also look up various metadata that we have about this image. So on Pinterest, we have like billions of images we can do better than just, uh, so we can compute various features offline, such as LDA topic vectors, um, we also have category vectors, annotations, et cetera. Um, we look up all that information to use in our visual search system to improve results. So after we've extracted various features uh, for this image, what we do is we send these features into all of our shards. So here I'll be going into more detail about the nearest neighbor lookup and the re-ranking stage that I mentioned previously. Um, so given a query's uh, deep learning feature, what we do is we look up nearest neighbors using a FLAN-based index. Um, so FLAN is a library for nearest neighbor lookup. And in particular, we use a method called hierarchical clustering trees, which was proven to be a fast way of looking up bi uh, matching binary features. Um, so after our nearest, after our nearest uh, neighbor lookup, we'll have various candidates to re-rank. Um, so one thing about deep learning features or deep learning features is that they might not be uh, always correct. So for example, in, in the image on the left side, there is one candidate that's actually a castle. Um, but, so this is an exaggerated example, but you can imagine visually similar items that aren't actually semantically uh, similar. So what we do in our re-ranking pipeline is that we take the various metadata that I mentioned before, such as our LDA topic vectors and our category vectors, and other semantic information that we know about this image to try to filter out these uh, images that we think aren't related. Um, another thing that we do in re-ranking is also remove near dupes. Um, so for example, in the results list on the left, the first image is actually an exact near dupe of the query, and we don't really want to show users the same image over again. So we also filter that in our re-ranking stage. And the last step of our visual search system is that we take all the results from our shards and then we have a final aggregator that combines these results sorted by a visual similarity score. And yeah, and that's it. Now you have your visually similar results. So now we've described the architecture to extract features and serve uh, and do visually similar lookup. Um, but now we want to get into more applications of this technology that we've built. So in particular, there are two applications that we want to explore. One is related pins, um, which is our pin recommendation system at Pinterest, and also an exciting new application that we've been trying to build using a highly leveraging our visual search system. Um, but first, I wanted to get more into what we did for related pins. Um, so as David mentioned in the beginning, 
really depends as currently is actually built based off uh, the graph at Pinterest, the user curated graph, where we take pin to pin core occurrences and use that to generate recommendations. Um, the idea for using this is that you can imagine that pins on the same board as the query should be relevant to that query um, because these are user curated, uh, user -curated collections which are highly uh, of, of high quality. But this signal doesn't always exist. Um, it takes users some time to put these images into boards. So for unpopular images and for new uh, images, we don't have recommendations at all. Um, so this is cl clearly one very uh, simple use case of our visual search system, simply show recommendations when there are none. And at Pinterest, we did this. And from our AB experiments, we realized that this gave us a 2% increase in related pins. Um, but going beyond just uh, trying to use the visual search system or to use our visual technologies for only 6% of traffic, um, we actually were able to increase engagement on related pins by 10% by adding these visual features into our re-ranking stage for all recommendations, uh, all related pins recommendations. Um, so you can imagine this giving a signal, this is basically giving a signal to our ranking function about visual similarity, which makes sense in this application as users are actually looking uh, from a query image to the recommendations. Um, so here are actually just a few more examples that are of our visual search system um, with the given query on the left and the results on the right. So our system is able to give visually similar results for a wide range of topics such as like fashion, home decor, um, and even like if you want to look up like a cute dog or something, it can return to you other cute dogs. Um, but yeah, so now I'll leave it up to David to explain this another application of our visual search technologies. All right, so with similar looks, um, the problem that we were trying to solve is that there are many images on Pinterest um, that contain lots of objects within them, but it's difficult for the user to find more information about these objects. So women's fashion is one of the largest categories on Pinterest, and this is a common frustration of the users. They might, um, they might see that there's a scarf or a bag or some boots in these images, but they can't find out where to buy them. Um, they might also see a product, but want to find alternatives that look similar. Or they might want to um, find ideas of how to use the product, for example, in an outfit. So we built a system uh, which is a search feature for visually similar objects. We do object to object uh, visual matching. The way we do this is first using uh, visual models for various kinds of objects. We trained a handful of uh, women's fashion objects, such as dresses, shoes, watches, bags, and so on. And then uh, when these objects were detected in an image, we would display a clickable red dot on the image. So upon clicking on the bag or the shoe, the user would get uh, a list of visually similar pins or objects within pins. So in order to make this um, a usable experience, it was really crucial that we had a low false positive rate for this object detection. In addition, the models are also fairly expensive to run, so we only want to use them when we had a fair bit of confidence that uh, the object actually existed in the image. So fortunately, with the Pinterest metadata, we're able to extract some keywords uh, from the aggregated descriptions provided by users. So here, um, with this particular pin, we match it to some keywords like heels or skirt, and those are uh, correlated to object detectors um, that we've already trained, and that allows us to give the detection results on the bottom. And so overall, by combining this text filtering with the image analysis, we're able to get the false positive rate uh, well below 1%. So to evaluate this, we've created a hand-labeled hand um, data set of objects and here is the false positive rate uh, for uh, using the text filtering alone, using the image-based detector alone, and combining both. So you can see that the overall false positive rate uh, drops significantly when both stages are used. So overall, this red dot experiment uh, UI that we showed was only experimental. Um, we ultimately decided to uh, launch this not in the form uh, that we just showed, but we used these results to enhance the related pins results. 
uh, by blending in similar objects into those recommendations, we're able to get a 5% increase in repins and clicks. Uh, and next, we're working on some other techniques for object detection, which will dramatically improve the recall. And we're also exploring other interfaces to show this uh, kind of feature to users. So overall in this talk, we've uh, gone over some of the infrastructure as well as applications of computer vision at Pinterest. Any questions? First of all, thank you, Andrew and David. Yeah. Visually entertaining talk, not even. <laughs> Can I borrow this one? Uh, two questions. First of all, so when you say you put uh, all the images in different shards, uh, do you organize them uh, in a particular way, or is it entire like uh, the shards uh, clustered in some way? Uh, uh, so right now they're actually randomly sharded. Um, so then, yeah, we haven't done any smart ways of allocating the images to the various shards. Okay. Uh, so question number two is uh, so so how's so this is regarding the similar looks where you actually do object uh, rec uh, detection uh, in the picture, right? So I know that house, for example, they they actually also have uh, you can tag a little product in there and they can do advertisement on top of it, right? Is that a way that you, you know kind of direction that you guys considering as well? Yeah, it's definitely a possibility of our application. Um, so we actually our next UI is actually something very similar to what you said with, where we want the users to be able to tell us like what objects that they're interested in instead of our object detector with like low recall and telling you that you can only press on this dot. Um, so after hopefully our, once our new experiment launches, we will be able to definitely add some advertisements or commerce information or like viable products, stuff like that. Any other questions? Well, meantime, one little question to you guys. You, you're not you showing your first related pins um, application. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Oh, go, go back. Yeah, go yeah. back. Uh, no, no, not back. Uh, sorry, forward. Oh, oh okay. forward, forward. That one with yes, again. For, stop, stop. That's one. Yes. Okay. And so you're claiming that. Uh, so what are you discovering, for example, on the? Um, Let's say on the houses. Oh, what are we discovering? Yeah, and what are you sort of looking there for um, in your visual search? Yeah, so I mean, because that follows another question. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so for each of these images we've extracted, um, so these search results you see are based on the uh, deep neural network responses. Mm -hmm. And we've taken an intermediate layer. And, uh, it's a network trained for classification, but we use the uh, intermediate representation to find uh, nearest neighbors. And so, I mean, it's not easy to interpret the exact meaning of these feature vectors, but generally speaking, when you look at like images that respond highly to uh, particular features, they're going to have uh, certain visual characteristics, like they all have uh, lots of grid patterns, for example, might uh, be one that contributed to those houses, uh, similar colors and textures. My question was related to if you consider now, imagine that uh, a real estate agent uses your visual search for the appropriate house. To what extent that's applicable? I mean, will, will that be a good application for a real estate agent or not at this stage? Well, I could give you visually similar houses, but I'm sure there are many other uh, uh, characteristics uh, okay, that you okay. do. <laughs> And then the last, my last question will be: How about in the um, uh, in in the in the section of art, of visual art? Uh, have you have you tried something in that sense, or right, not? So museums and uh, so it's actually pretty interesting. Um, so deep learning features can definitely capture artistic properties. Um, so one example I actually tried recently was that there's this painting of this dog, and what you can like usually when you put these images into visual search systems, you can imagine other dogs being shown other real life dogs, but instead what our system gives back is actually real life paintings of dogs. Um, so in case users are interested in various artistic styles, they can definitely put uh, those images into our system to get related artistic styles. Amazing, one more question. Uh, so if you go back to the, your experiment result, you say there's two categories and you only had like a 2% increase in repeat engagement if it's uh, live recommendations. These are the ones, the traffic that doesn't have recommendations before. Like I wonder right. like, is that 2% uh, for only this category, or, which is really not much, right? It's overall. 
uh, on the entire site. Okay, so it's really because it's, it's the triggered uh, population is small and then you risk getting, so it's actually for this only triggered population is actually pretty mar uh, like a much larger, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I'm just interested if you looked at the effect on session times as well, because one of the ironies of the better we get at, at recommending things to people, the less time they have to spend looking for, for things. So I wonder, I mean, it could go either way with this application. Either you're really engaging them and they want to look at more pictures or they find what they're looking for really quickly. So currently we haven't done any studies on that, but I do agree it's a great idea. Um, maybe in the future we'll run some experiments measuring that. Okay, I think I have abused a little bit the time uh, and uh, the generosity of David and Andrew, but let's thank again them uh, for the great...